everyone, this is Nick for PokerFairP.com, also known as uh, Crazy Cookie over on the forums. Um, and today I'm bringing you episode two of my um, study with Snowy kind of series. Um, today I'm going to do pretty much the same as what I did in the first uh, video, which is play against Snowy, discuss the spots that come up, um, kind of show you how I'm using Snowy to improve. Um, hopefully you guys can then go and, I don't know, use Snowy in a, in a similar way, maybe find a more effective way. Um, as mentioned in the last video, there's um, a forum, or there's a, there's, there's a journey post on the forums specifically for this, um, or specifically for Snowy study, so check that out. Um, and yeah, so let's, let's dive into some of these spots. So this eight jack off here. Open it on the bottom, which I think is standard. Um, our bottom range is obviously going to be super wide compared to the rest of our, you know, rest of the positions we play from. Um, and on this board, I kind of begin to. Uh, there's there's a couple of different approaches we could take. One would be that we see bet pretty much everything. Um, the idea purely being that villain just you know will fold a lot here. Um, but I would prefer to first of all say, well, let's make sure that the hands we we see bet first of all is a bluff hands that are bluffing some of the combos of 9x um, and, and anything that really kind of blocks this board a little bit so i think eight jack does that perfectly blocking eight nine uh, but it also blocks hands like seven eight which is going to continue uh eight ten all of those kind of hands um, and the jack's quite helpful as well um so sure we have the back directory but it's more here we just we have two cards which block a lot of the cards which we're going to see it continue with uh, we're going to see villain continue with rather so i just go ahead and make the standard bet sizing and um, we get a fold. Kings is going to be an open. Uh, it's going to be a free bet, unsurprisingly. When he pops it back, um, in position I call. Out of position, I think it's better just to go ahead and uh, get it in here. I'm just going to make it 45. We did in the last session have a bluffing range. We had we had um we had a five bet bluff. So, you know, I think I think a lot. What a lot of people can begin to do is they begin to get a little bit tricky in those spots. Um, sort of like overthink it and, and go like, oh, well, I want a five-bet bluffing range here, and then they, they, they flat call kings or something like that. Maybe not in that exact spot, but it's, it's, it's certainly something that I, you know, was guilty of at, at times, um, just sort of making things way too complicated. The king nine, facing the limp. Um, this is kind of close. In, in real games, I think I'd probably begin raising this. Against Snowy, there's no real point because his range is pretty well balanced here. Um... So yeah, the 10 jack, uh, I kind of like this one as probably a triple. We block queen 10, queen jack, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're not going to be betting this board loads of the time. We'll probably have a slightly... We we'll, we'll, we'll probably won't polarize. Um, we probably won't have our polarized bet sizing. Um, in the last last episode, I did mention that we had... That I'm playing with sort of like a polarized bet sizing and a... I guess you'd kind of call it a merged bet size. Um, in other words, this would be sort of like my typical merged bet size, which I would do with, you know, things like top pair um, and hands, which had good blockers or good uh, draw equity, and then a more polarized range with some of our nutty combos and some of the combos which we kind of have to bet because otherwise we just fold, we we just check flop fold turn loads, um, but we need to maximize our fold equity, so we do that with a bigger bet. Blah blah blah. Uh, on this board, I don't think I have that polarized range um, bet size, so everything would be this, which makes it slightly easier for me I guess um, same with this king nine uh, although this is not a this is a you know odd spot but if this board came down I don't think there's going to be many spots where I have a polarized betting range um, so yeah we bet there be just because we, we could have checked back the king nine I guess on the ace high but uh, I much prefer once it gets checked to just betting because pretty much everything less than an ace probably just check folds um, and you see that a lot in games as well when in a limp spot like that people just fold a lot Facing a bet so we might as well just take the uh, take the free money on offer and bet pretty much our entire range Ace jack off's just a fold in the small blinds against mid position against the cutoff and the bottom We can begin to play back, but I think against mid position with ace jack is just a bit too loose I'm just going to confirm that by looking at this and indeed we can see, yeah. So ace jack off the green line suggests that we're going to be um, free betting a, a sign in the cutoff slash button. Probably more cutoff. Well, button we've got a complete range, I feel. So ace jack off, we're going to free bet against the cutoff, but not so much against mid position. 
you know, obviously if that then becomes villain dependent. Uh, interested to see if this HX suit is going to be a cooler kind. I think it is. Um, it's cool gets cut off. What have we got? Eight jack. Oh, it might be a free, but actually, okay, that makes sense. As mentioned in the last video as well, there's yeah, you can go off and make um, different ranges to this. The hands here, I just use them because I'm you know I, I prefer playing certain hands over others. Other people will have slightly different ranges. Um, it's a pretty good flop for me. I'm going to deal with this ace jack off first, so um, a pretty simple way to do it actually. Is this. So. Uh, we're pretty much in the cutoff here saying that this is our calling range so sevens through jacks uh, ace ten suited king jack suited queen jack suited ace jack off ace queen jack. so we can call this um the only thing i don't like about these sort of spots which i have i have noticed over the past few weeks um more so playing snowy is how capped we are here um so to deal with that we probably do have to like include sometimes queen's races but i kind of think the ev of of four betting those is probably fine so we can call this, um, it's not like an amazing hooray call, um, but we do have better hands in there as well. So it's it's kind of a hand that we can call just because otherwise we just fold way too much preflop. We're still going to have boards like this where we're going to be able to check call. And if he has kings, we're ahead, um, which is nice. When he double barrels, we're kind of now looking at our range. We're going, okay, what what hands have we got? So sevens and eights fold pre on the flop. So the tens, so the jacks. So nines call or raise on the flop. Queen jack suited probably calls. King jack suited with a flush draw will do. King queen will call. And then all of our ace So we, we've got quite a few hands here. Obviously we've got nines, which is the nuts effectively. It's not, but you know, we're gonna treat it as the nuts. Queens, uh, sorry, ace queen, which is again, very, very strong. Um, I kind of here wanna call again with the ace jack just cause we're gonna fold our king queen combos and our queen jack combos first um so i'd rather call with this and then see what he does on the river um then when we get to the river when he shoves it's like well we have we have the ace queen combos which we um call twice with you know, we probably check raise nines on the flop or on the turn so when, when we get to the river like our range is pretty much ace queen ace queen suited ace jack suited ace jack off ace 10 suited um which hands we best to call like obviously the ace queen off and ace queen suited against this sizing we can probably get away with just calling well against the pot pretty, pretty close pot in this source but we can get away with just calling the ace queen we have what like uh two and then oh, i can't bother to work out the combos three three six nine eleven combos compared to the um slightly more than that or like 17 18 19 something like that here so we can we can get away with folding and not be too unhappy about it um if i was going to begin having to call some ace, ace jack or ace 10 combos i'd probably pick the ones without a heart because he can turn like ace two of hearts into a he probably wouldn't even do that so it's probably just case we just fold this and call when we have ace queen Eight jack suited now then. Now that we're now that we're back on this spot, which is probably going to be just as exciting um, with free bet versus the cutoff. Um, so in this kind of spot, it's, it, 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 we've we've got jacks plus. We, we're probably going to see bet a lot of those. Um, we've got these hands here. I think all these queen eight, jack eight, king eight suited, especially if they have a flush draw or backdoor flush draw. I think are really good to bet. Uh, the jack eight probably more so than the others because yeah we have a flush draw but we also block, block pocket jacks which is helpful block ace jacks of of clubs jack tenor clubs those kind of hands which are going to be a little bit more aggressive to play so i think the jack of clubs is quite valuable here and the eight of clubs sort of just helps a little bit um so these kind of hands i feel are going to make up a good portion of my bluff range um and then i can also go for a check raise with some nut flush draws um bet some my other flush draws Probably if I begin bl b bluffing these offsuit hands, probably like queen jack off is slightly better than ace king off, uh, just because you know we with ace king off a similar spot to last time where we we just sort of block a lot of the hands that he's going to fold the ace highs. Maybe with the ace of clubs we bet because we uh, we're more likely to get folds. Um, yeah, if we look at our range, I mean 
in terms of what sizing should we go i mean typically people say well just half pot here but i, I in half point three bet pots but i don't think that's necessarily true if we look at our range it's like we haven't really got any nutted hands at the moment so we can't go too big but we do have you know we haven't got like other than jacks we haven't really got too many really pure mid strength hands we've kind of got over pairs or a flush draw so i do kind of think that i want to go a little bit bigger here uh so I'm probably going to go for about 9.5 also makes it easier to stack by the river. Uh, Snowy raises. Um, it's not great when he raises, to be honest, because he can have better flush draws. He can have sets. He can have maybe 6-4. You know, he can have, um, like, I guess, like 5-7 of clubs, 5-7 of diamonds, which he's going to mix up with. So it's, it's not a great spot for us here. Um, the only problem is we don't okay we'll call with jacks plus but it's kind of gross when we do um getting the odds we are which is somewhere in between like just over three to one it's kind of tempting but like we might only we, we might have 27 percent equity a portion of the time so i'm okay with just folding this assuming that we bet some not flush draws and don't check raise them all but bet some king queen suited um I, I'm okay with folding this. I don't love it, but I'm okay with it. The fact that he raises there. I mean, it's just like, even if he's perfectly polarized, he can polarize his range in such a way that even when we shove, like, he potentially could have hands that call, like, some nut flush draws or whatever. And it just makes it, it, just makes it very difficult for us to, um, to show profit there, I think. Um, so the small blinds here, I'm interested if this call is just going to be a call, but I don't think it is. No. Okay, just hold that. Six, seven suited. Uh, we're going to call versus. Yeah, we are. Shock. Um, so we call the six, seven suited. Um, it's not a great board for us. I mean, the one thing we do see a lot, uh, I, I get a lot of the time, is people kind of. Um, and this is, this is certainly micro stakes regs. They get into these sort of spots and they feel gross by having to fold. Uh, maybe not in this exact spot, but they. They don't really know their range inside out. And I w I've been guilty of this a lot in the past. And I see it with a lot of people. Um, and an interesting discussion I had on, on the threads recently was, you know, is it important for a micro stakes player to know his range and to worry about what he's doing with the rest of his range? And I think it is purely because here, you know, we feel like, oh, are we, if, if we don't know our range, we could be very, very much exploited here. Whereas knowing, not with this exact hand, but with, with parts of our range, you know, if we fold unless we have an ace, then we're probably folding way, way too many hands or pocket fives. You know, it's it's kind of gross. So we need to begin to understand. Okay, so what what hands do we need to call with here to make sure we're not being exploited? If we, you know, know that people don't bluff here with this size in general as much as they need to, then we can begin folding some. But you know, this six seven is an easy fold, but. You know, there's going to be times when we're in such sort of spots and we kind of get a little bit tilted maybe through folding when it's a case of, well, we fold this, but most of the time or a, a large a not large enough part of the time, we simply don't fold and we um, we call and put our opponent in a tough spot. Um, so when someone says, um, oh, we should be, you know, we don't need to worry about our range with 10 and L, you kind of do, if it, even if it's just on a mental uh, sort of level. 2-9 suited in game I would call it I don't you know there's a obviously like against min raise do we want to fold anything suited probably not um, I just don't see this being very profitable against snowy against regs I probably don't either it's more like to be a free bet and to be honest I probably in terms of my range here um, let me just see uh, big blind call in terms of my range if I do begin loosening out I'm going to like take all these hands first just cover them in a little bit. So take take them first, and then you maybe like this. The nine two suited's quite a way down in my range. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So I, I don't mind folding that, even though probably should go ahead and and, and defend it um, with some frequency. Maybe I don't know. Um, nine two suited here. I kind of just want to go for a, a bet. Um, it's not like super amazing. Probably just about higher EV than checking to make it fine. Um, the jack four suited, so we open in the small blinds, probably a tiny little bit loose. Um, I kind of, as soon as I see someone fold a bit too much, jack two suited plus is kind of like the, this part of my hands I begin raising, so I forward raise this here. 
We flop a gut shot, we block Jack Queen, we block Pocket Jacks, although he probably free bets that nearly all the time. Um, we have a flush draw, so I don't mind um, betting here. We do have a more polarized betting range here, but I think this fits more into the portion of our range where it's like we have a draw and we have a blocker, so it's better just go for this. When Snow raises, we do have to defend now with a fairly big portion of our range, I suppose, when we bet this size, just because it's like otherwise we begin folding a lot of hands. Um, so we, we we will call this a flush draw. The four's you know mildly helpful, uh, so we'll call again. I don't love it now though. I kind of feel like a lot of the time he Snow does this with like king queen, um, and he does with six five, which is interesting. Um, I'm not sure whether that's great or not, to be honest. I feel like there's some lower EV hands he can raise first. I don't think that free betting there is going to be good at all on the flop. Purely because like we we, we get re-raised and we just have, one, have no idea what to do. Uh, we probably can't fold. And also we just get it in bad the whole time. Pocket eights here on this board um, in early after opening from early position. I'm just going to check on this. I think this is a call. It is. Uh, so after opening from early position, you know, obviously our range here is is pretty much well. It's the tightest opening range we have. Um, we hit this board quite a lot, but we we tend not to. I tend not to see bet tons and tons out of position here. Um, I might therefore go with a strategy where I see bet some of my sets along with um, some of my weaker hands. It's like an 8-7 of hearts I might go ahead and bet. I'm kind of thinking to turn this, the, this sort of like sixes through eights into bluffs as well. Because uh, I don't really see a merit of checking because we could then we then end up, we end up effectively checking a big portion of our range that folds, which is eights through, sixes through tens, and then, you know, a ton of other hands as well. Um, because check calling with like, I don't know, let's pick a hand around it. Like check calling with ace queen off kind of doesn't work. It's not great. So I'd rather begin betting those and therefore I need to bet um, uh, some like, some king x, certainly a polar, a bit of some por por portion of is going to be polarized. Uh, so I'm going to go, I'm going to put this in the polarized portion of my range as a bluff. I don't love it at all, but I think it's probably slightly better than not having it in there. Um, it's annoying now though i guess from my perspective i probably don't have too many flush draws in my polarized range but snowy and my opponents won't really know that um and i could also do it with ace king so i think this is probably a decent enough spot to to bet again um if we go pot shove he kind of needs to have the nut flush to call or at least a king high flush um and because the queen and the jack blocking is is kind of helpful, uh, so I'm tempted to go big, and then shove, and try and exploit snow that way. So go like I don't know if we go pot again, we have yeah we'll go pot and shove, see what happens. Okay, it's kind of helpful there. I mean, like we probably need to put some nut flushes in our in our potting range, or at least some other flushes in there, um, just so that we have the nuts some of the time on the turn. Uh, ace four suited we get uh, raised pre-flop and then uh, c bet into which is totally fine of course um in terms of should we do anything here we don't really have a raising range here so we kind of get into this sort of spot where um we kind of just need to come up with ha enough hands to call with uh it's like the nine x hands are fine we've got those to call we've probably got a lot of these broadway kind of hands that we can call to then play aggressively later on I think I'd rather call ace four suits if I had a backdoor flush draw, so I don't mind just folding this and calling when I have a backdoor flush draw. I think that's fine. Ten eight here. Um, I probably do have a polarized range. I don't think I necessarily do it here though. We do block some hands. I probably, I probably here want to put it right in the middle of the two because although it blocks queen ten, nine eight, nine ten, it doesn't. It it hasn't got like tons and tons of equity. It's not like wow, look at look at this sort of thing. Um, so I'm probably I'm just sort of thinking like do we have more of a polar do we have more value do we have more nutted hands here than than we would do on other boards uh if the two was like a six I probably would do because then I'm opening queen six suited but queen two suited do I open queen two suited if I do then that probably means I can pot this I do some of the time 
Uh, I'm going to go for the, the smaller size and then I'm probably then going to put this, hopefully we get a call. Okay. The only reason I say that is because I want to then go into um, polarized betting on the turn, um, which is something I do. Um, and pretty much then that would then be a perfect candidate to go into my polarized um, betting on the turn. Four frame, I'm just going to fold. I was considering betting the flop, but I think multi-way, it doesn't really work too well. So as I mentioned before, um, check out the forum for um, some of the conversations we're having around around Snowy, around the, the way I'm using it, way around the way some other people are using it. Um, you know, I try and post an update on my, I guess, Snowy journey, um, as well as my um, sort of like some of the things I'm, I'm struggling with and, and doing well with. Um, so that's that's going to be, I think, quite a valuable source of information for, for, for not only, you know, other people, but for myself as well, seeing what other people think of things. Um, certainly going to be a continue, but I'm just wondering whether it's a free bet or a call. Uh, there we go, it's a call. Um, so when the big blind calls, it's kind of annoying. Um, it's not a board I check raise on that often. When the big blind leads and the button calls, it just like screams. We just have to fold. Need some more action cards. I'm tempted to open King Jack off under the gun, even though we don't. Ten jack suited, I think, is going to be a fold. Maybe to be a free bet. Yeah, we can free bet this. And when we get four bet, the the cool thing is like, you know, when we get four bet here, uh, we do have a lot of pocket pairs, jack high, uh, jack, uh, jacks plus. Um, so we don't need to worry and think like, oh, should we begin peeling this? Because like, no, like we have enough way better hands that we can either peel or uh, or four bet. And better four bet bluff hands available as well. And although that seems like like the obvious spot, is something that a lot of people who aren't thinking about their range often um, get into trouble with because they're like, oh, I need to have some bluffs here. Maybe this is a good hand to do it with, and they then have that sort of thought with all of their potential bluffs, and they kind of then instead of being like, oh, I'm only going to bluff with these combos, they kind of then. Say, oh, I'm going to try and bluff, you know, maybe 20% of the time with all of my bluff combos. And that just gets very messy very quickly because often people, we well, as, as people, we, we overestimate. Um, so the queen free here, I'm okay with checking it back. Um, I feel like the better queen X we probably have to bet. Um, that being said, we do bluff, bluff this board quite a lot. So it might be an idea just to bet this to have that in our range so that we're not just like only have bluffs, which can be a problem. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to bet it, check the turn with it. I don't think checking would have been a mistake or anything like that. I, don't, I, don't, I think both of them probably are very similar um, expected value. And it's just that betting probably helps our strategy a little bit more than checking. 10-9, I'm just going to check back on this board. The ace is not great for us, but I'm probably going to just check. I don't have many ace in my range. Um, and we just check down and probably lose to a queen. That when he has 6-7, just gives up. It's nice. You don't get Snowy doing that very often, completely giving up with seven high. But you do get it in real life, so that's what's important, right? Might be able to squeeze in enough hands to get to 200 maybe today on the video. So the 8-9 here, uh, in a limp pot, again, we just have enough showdown value that we can just 
check down here. Hopefully he doesn't have a jack or a king, but he will do, you know, just as often as he doesn't, I suppose, when he checks down. Right, I'll go for one more orbit and then we'll have a very quick review to see if there was any huge blunders that we made. I don't think there was. I'm thinking maybe the ace jack is going to throw up something, but other than that, I'm not, not too sure. It doesn't feel like we've done anything ludicrous for sure. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll leave this table. Um, okay, so this king six is actually quite fun. Um, so it's just about enough rebet range against the button we do have like top set and all the over pairs here and i think it's a good enough board that we could go ahead and bet those um we also have hands like jack nine and queen nine with her which has a straight draw or a gut shot hands like we even have hands like jack seven here jack eight well jack eight's got a pair so we we do have quite a few like semi strong hands here along with our draws so it's probably a board which i'm probably going to be check calling on quite a lot and betting with our draws quite a lot so it kind of then throws this sort of king six into a bit of an odd situation because i don't like we can't value bet it but at the same time i don't really want to check call with it um but like i don't really want to check fold and let ace x win or, or queen x or king x or whatever just win the pot so i'd rather here go for a bet because i'm going to be betting so many other hands that it's kind of like well we can then decide what to do on the turn um and I'd rather then give up with some weak hands. I only need to go for half pot here because we have such a, a um, quite a big kind of like semi value, well, value slash draw range. I guess the other thing there with the king six is because we don't block any ace x, it's kind of helpful. Um, we even block like king 10, king jack, king queen, which he may float with. So I think he's more likely to turn up with trash there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to now go and get the review part up and... Um, pause the video so you don't have to watch all that okay and just like last time this is you know the uh review sort of screen we can see we've made one blunder and we gave up a very small amount of ev there so i'm not too worried about that we can we can have a look and see what it is really quickly i suppose um and it's saying that we should be calling the eight jack rather than folding um which kind of like at the time the reason we didn't was because we had some better flush draws over cards and we just i think this is a sort of spot where in game a lot of people lose money with it and and, and snowy is saying that we're making money because obviously snowy's got a balanced raising range here but i think that in game people kind of get into the situation like oh well you know i have a pretty strong hand here i have a flush draw i have a back to a straight draw and they kind of begin to overvalue it and when someone raises in a free bet pot typically i mean like this is obviously more so in the 10 and l 25 and l probably 15 l as well field above that people begin to balance themselves enough that you know you can kind of um kind of can call this for the same reasons that snowy snowy's calling it but certainly at the lower stakes people just do not raise here with enough pure air combos for you to be able to call um and or like maybe like four or five of um of hearts or whatever just because like he can't really fold it but he can't really call it either so he kind of has to raise it um you know the reality of the situation is if a club comes off then if villain has a set he still has equity and he may not pay us off unless he has a better flush himself um like villain can only really have 10 7 of clubs here and like we're not in love when we get it in with that against that because like sure we're ahead but not by much um so it's like if we get all the money in at some point with a flush the likelihood is we're over behind or you know if we get it all in the turn the worst best case scenario is you know villain has a set and we have equity against that or somehow it turns up with nine six four six nine four i don't think so um so it's just not great when we get it in with the with the money when we make a flush and then like the rest of the time like when the turns are blank and villain just bets again we kind of like just obviously we have to fold because we can't really do anything and that means that all of his bluffs make more money than if we fold here because they will you know simply put they'll they'll make money from our call and then folding so it means that you know 
80% of the time, we're going to fold on the turn. Or worse, or even worse, we hit an eight or a jack and call, and then, you know, we have to fold on the river because it's like, well, we bluff catch in case he was, double, he was you know, betting turn to then give up river. Or, you know, or we just get into really odd sizes in terms of stacks because obviously, like, on the river, we're going to face a very small bet. So although against Snowy, like, yeah, he's saying we should call this. Um, I think he would probably... Well, he's suggesting to have a small raise, which is odds. Um, would be his preferred raise size if he did raise. But I feel that here, certainly in-game, it's better just to fold. And even against Snowy, like, I don't know how I'm going to necessarily make money here. And the only way I am is by bluff catching. Probably when I hit a jack or when I make a flush. And it, it just doesn't seem like that's going to be that profitable even against Snowy. Um, just to like confirm that, we're going to have a look and see what Snowy raises here. Um, and like when we look at his raising range, he has sets, you know, 20% of the time. Um, he has a high card 40% of the time. Um, and the that's odds. Why has it done that? Oh, okay, I see. So it's got one pair, you know, some of the time. And those one pairs, though, are like queens, kings, jacks, ten. So, like, against a lot of that range, we just don't have much equity. Ace nine, he raises. Like, sure, we're doing quite well against ace nine, but we're not doing very well when he gets it in, you know. Um, and it, his high cards, I suppose, are going to be some flush draws. And all of his flush draws beat us. So it's kind of, it, it does kind of get to that point. Other than oh, you can't have ten eight or eight seven either, so it kind of gets to that point where it's just it's going to be very difficult to play if we continue. And typically, when things get difficult, we're going to play suboptimally. When we play suboptimally, we're going to make a big mistake. When we make a big mistake, we're going to lose money. Um, and whether that's against Snowy because he's you know playing quite well, or if, <laughs> I say quite well, or if we're against somebody who isn't playing quite well but just has a lot of strong hands there because they raise. Um, so yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you gained something from it. Definitely post in the forums. Um, I'd love to hear anyone else's sort of like opinions on any of the hands I played. Um, and, you know, post, share your snowy experiences in that in that threads. Um, it's been Nick for Pug VIP, and I hope you enjoyed that.